Continuing now on Newsmax Prime, another lawsuit has been filed against Fox News. And as Miranda Kahn reports, it was filed by another female Fox host. J.D., Fox News and talent Andrea Tintores have been broiled in a legal clash over her contract ever since April. Now Tintores is ratcheting it up a notch. Women, we were promised so much with the rise of feminism, and we have gotten a lot, believe me, more than we can deal with. Former Fox News talent Andrea Tintaros files suit against the Fair and Balanced Network. She claims the company retaliated against her after she complained about harassment from former head Roger Ailes. I think that Fox News probably uh, is more in touch with the American people. And other top executives. According to Tantaris's lawsuit, Fox News masquerades as a defender of traditional family values. But behind the scenes, it operates like a sex-fueled Playboy Mansion-like cult, reported by the New York Times. It is going to be a pretty shocking. She isn't alone. Former anchor Gretchen Carlson and Megyn Kelly have also spoken out against the network, claiming sexual harassment. I've been truly blessed to have so many supporters. Carlson filed suit last month, prompting Fox to launch its own internal investigation. Ailes has denied any wrongdoing, but resigned from the network in the wake of the probe with a $40 million exit package. In the meantime, other Fox hosts have come to Ailes' defense. The Roger I know is somebody who's been amazing to me. I've worked for Roger Ailes for 20 years, all right? Best boss I've ever had. New York Magazine's Gabriel Sherman has been following this story since the beginning, and today he implied on Twitter that Tentoris's lawsuit would soon be followed by others. J.D., back to you. Thanks, Miranda. A reminder to you that you can call in and join our conversation at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. And someone has called in to talk with me right now from Belleville, Texas. Bonnie is on the line. Bonnie, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Hi, J.D. I'm glad to get to talk to you. I just want to have a comment about Fox News and the girls on there need to learn to dress properly. An inch below the collarbone and an inch above the knee is all they should be. Uh, their, their clothing should be to that level. All right. Anything more than, anything more than that is too much. The way they sit on those couch, the couch every day with the four of them and, and a man sitting in the middle with their legs hanging out, I think it's disgusting. Don't call it family well, values. I, I, I can understand what you're saying, and we've known that in a variety of jobs there are dress codes. And, Bonnie, we appreciate your comment tonight from Belleville, Texas. Now, to help us understand how troubling stories might adversely affect a brand, we're pleased to be joined by Mark Rudolph, branding advisor to CEOs and author of the book, Be Unique or Be Ignored, The CEO's Guide to Branding. Mark is a Newsmax insider. You can also find him at markrudolph.com. So, Mark, certainly Fox is not being ignored, but what should Fox be doing in this situation? Well, I think Fox News is really doing what it can. Rupert Murdoch responded pretty quickly to the crisis. He moved Roger Ailes out. He made some organizational changes. And so far, I think the brand is intact. And I would say that the dog is wagging the tail. If the, the tail being distractions and the dog being the brand. If the distractions, if you compare it to the Trump campaign, where, where every time Donald Trump makes a gaffe or engages in a miscue, the, the tail is actually wagging the dog, and then he goes off the rails. That's not happening to Fox News, and Fox News is still number one and doing pretty well, and the, the network is handling things well. Don't forget, this is all about money. Now, I am not diminishing what happened to these women, because I think it's... It's, uh, it's unfair, assuming that everything they're saying is true, and I have no reason to doubt them. But had they received the compensation they wanted and the shows that they wanted, there would be no lawsuits. So they, they weighed the treatment they got with the money they stopped getting, and then they decided to sue. So right now, the public is kind of immune from what's going on at Fox News, and as long as the tail is not wagging the dog, I think the brand will be fine. 
All right, let's talk about, you made mention of the Trump campaign in passing. Obviously, Donald Trump uh, has made some complaints about media coverage, but now Mrs. Trump, Melania, is not thrilled by the way certain media outlets have portrayed her live. In fact, attorneys for Melania Trump issued this statement to the Guardian newspaper concerning the Daily Mail. Uh, Mrs. Trump has placed several news organizations on notice of her legal claims against them, including Daily Mail, among others, for making false and defamatory statements about her supposedly having been an escort in the late 1990s. Uh, the statement goes on to say all such statements are 100% false, highly damaging to her reputation, and personally hurtful. She understands that news media have certain leeway in a presidential campaign, but outright lying about her in this way exceeds all bounds of appropriate news reporting and human decency. Obviously, Mark, you are a branding expert, but I do believe in terms of law, uh, what happens in the UK is very different from what happens in the United States in these cases. But to a, to a more tactical point in terms of the Trump brand, with Melania Trump willing and apparently able to take immediate legal action, does it help her case and does it help the public perception of exactly who she is? I, I think it probably helps her. And, and if I were she, I would fight too. But I don't think it's really going to affect Donald Trump's campaign. Don't forget, a few weeks ago, the New York Post published nude photos of Melania. And uh, they were, it was right in the middle of the campaign for apparently no reason. And it didn't cause Trump any headaches at all. I think the public has already factored in that Melania used to be a model and most models have nude photos on the internet and elsewhere. And people have already accepted that that's what her occupation was and that's what she did. And it really doesn't affect Donald Trump's brand one way or another. So I think she should fight it. But regardless of what happens, I think it's a kind of an asterisk here regarding Trump's brand. Uh, continuing on the theme of the campaign, but going uh, to uh, the Democrat nominee, we take a look at the uh, favorability polls for Hillary Clinton, and Americans do not have a favorable view of the Democrat candidate. On average, she has a negative double-digit spread. And then, of course, we were talking tonight, the AP report about the fact that more than half of her guests at the State Department gave money to the Clinton Foundation. That's got to be tough. And yet the Clintons, it's almost as if their brand mark is saying, yeah, so what? Well, you know, that's a really good point. And you know, I've written recently uh, at Newsmax about this subject. And I believe that if, if Donald Trump had not stepped in it so many times, he would be ahead 25 points in the polls. And the only reason she's either tied or ahead by a few points, if you look at the recent polls, is because of Donald Trump's miscues. I mean, she is borderline criminal here. And even the mainstream media are now hounding her about the emails in the foundation. So she's in deep, deep doo-doo, and there's no way she can escape it. And yes, she's acting very nonchalantly as if nothing is happening. What else does, what other choice does she have? But realistically, if Donald Trump sticks with his message, stays on message, and like Michael Phelps, is focused and disciplined, he can beat her. This travesty, this, this unbelievable experience where Americans are watching one of the candidates on a daily basis being exposed for all of this criminal activity, of this bribery, uh, it's amazing that she's even in the race and, at all. And that's why we'll have you back and we'll continue to monitor it. Mark Rudolph, again, his book. Be Unique or Be Ignored, The CEO's Guide to Branding. You can also check him out at markrudolph.com. Well, now, that'll do it for tonight. Tomorrow night, retired Navy SEAL and Donald Trump supporter, Carl Higby. He's also got a book, plus Armstrong Williams. Till then, stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.